Carnegie Mellon University, Leonard Gelfin Center presents Computer Hardware, a series where we'll be talking about how different computer hardware components work and taking apart two older laptops as well. This Apple MacBook is the first. Ooh. And the second is this Toshiba satellite. Ooh. Safety first. Please do not attempt to take apart any computers at home. Adult supervision and permission is required. If you have adult supervision, please remember to shut down and disconnect any power supplies first. Finally, taking apart a laptop can void the warranty, so please be aware of that. Now for the main event, hard drives. A hard drive in a computer is like a filing cabinet in an office. In a filing cabinet, files are stored in a hopefully obvious organization system until they need to be accessed again. But in a hard drive, information is stored differently, and we'll get to that in just a moment. For each of my laptops, the hard drives are the second components to come out. This time though, I did need to use a screwdriver. But as you can see, the removal of each of the hard drives is basically the same in both of my laptops. There's always a storage size with a hard drive. Since it is referred to as memory, it is sometimes confused with another type of memory, which is known as RAM or random access memory. We'll talk about RAM in a later episode, but for now, let's talk about storage size since both RAM and hard drive space are currently measured in gigabytes. My Apple hard drive has a storage capacity of 250 gigs, and the Toshiba hard drive has a storage capacity of 500 gigs. But just how big is a gigabyte, or more commonly, a gig? One gig is equal to 1000 megabytes, or MB. We can break that down in a way that makes even more sense to us. For example, if I take a photo with my phone, that photo is on average four and a half megs. And if I look at the size of an uncompressed MP3 music file on my computer, it's about nine megs, which means that if I divide by 4.5, I will get 222.22. So about 222 photos can fit in one gig of space. Multiply it by 250, to give me approximately 55,500 photos. From there, I was able to figure out the other totals as well. Please keep in mind though, that this would be if you had nothing else on your hard drive. Now, let's talk connectors. Both of these hard drives are Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, or SATA. Both have seven pins to provide power to the mechanical parts inside and 15 pins for data. These longer pins help to ground the hard drive as they first connect. So now, let's take the case off of the Apple hard drive to reveal the mechanical parts inside. I'm going to start by unscrewing the screws. 20 screws and one incredibly sticky metal sticker designed to prevent people from doing exactly what I'm doing, I'm able to take off the case. The first thing to come off was the printed control board, or PCB. The PCB provides a power connection, which is right here, and tells the mechanical parts inside of the hard drive what to do and how to operate. The final remaining screw, which was hidden under the sticker, easily removed, allowing us to finally open up the case. The round mirror inside is the platter, which is where information is stored on the hard drive. To the left is the arm, and at the end of the arm is the read-write head, which both read and write data onto the platter. Concerning data storage, the platter itself is organized into tracks, which are arranged like concentric circles going around the platter. It is further divided up into parts on each track, also known as sectors. A group of sectors is known as a cluster. So, a track can go all the way around the platter, seen here in light blue, and a sector can make up a part of a track, seen here in a jade color. While the platter spins, the arm articulates to move the read-write head to a particular sector or cluster. The head itself is so small that we would need a microscope to really get a good look at it. When the read-write head is working, a small magnetized current interprets or records the data bit by bit. One thing that we haven't touched on is the rate at which the platter spins, so let's use some augmented reality for that. Whoops, 
not that one. He's a little cranky today. Ah, this one's much better. Looking at the specs for my hard drive, each runs at a rate of 5400 RPM, which means that the platter inside is turning 5400 times per minute. My cube here is spinning at a rate of about 600 RPM at the moment. In order to reach 5400 revolutions per minute, my cube here would need to spin nine times faster. And unfortunately, the frame rate in this video just doesn't support that. Though these hard drives are from about a decade ago, even today, a standard speed for hard drives like these is about 7200 RPM. A faster RPM means that your files will of course transfer faster, but also that your hard drive will likely get hotter and be louder. A newer type of drive, different from the hard disk drives that we've been talking about, is known as a solid state drive. Unlike hard drives, solid state drives have no moving parts. These SSDs are usually flash or USB drives. And the advantage with an SSD is that it will be faster and quieter and cooler, but it will also be more expensive. Well, that's all we have for you today. So we hope you enjoyed this video about hard drives. Stay tuned for more computer hardware episodes. And if you're interested in learning more, please be sure to check the links below. Thanks and see you next time.